Hello and a very warm welcome to Daily Dispatch powered by HSBC. I'm Priya Shree. Ten years, our news roundup for the day. As a part of the FinTech Open Summit hosted by the Niti Aayog in collaboration with PhonePay, AWS, as well as EY, top leaders like Nitin Kamath, Vivek Bilgavi, as well as Harshil Mathur came together to discuss this year's union budget and the implications it had on the Indian FinTech ecosystem. The budget's focus was on cryptocurrency, neo banking, as well as the overall integration of digitization and technology into the sector. These were some of the key highlights of the panel discussion. A very warm welcome to Daily Dispatch, powered by HSBC. I'm Priya Shet, and joining me on this very interesting conversation is Vikas Kutkut. Yeah, thank you very much, Vikas. Uh, Vikas is joining us from Ferns and Petals, and on this occasion of Valentine's Day, I uh, am happy to have you on board uh, here, uh, Vikas. Today, uh, talking about Valentine's Day, I'm sure you've received a lot of orders already for um, gifting and all of that. So tell us a little bit about uh, how the experience has been so far. Thank you for having me over. Mm. Valentine Day is, of course, the most special day for us as a florist because uh, it's the it's the day which uh, is meant for relationships, for uh, you know, romantic couples, and flower has always been one medium to express your emotions. So yes, we are really happy, and we have been seeing constant growth in this segment. So I guess uh, with the passage of time, it's getting more and more popular. Right. Uh, you know, I want to understand the last couple of months in this pandemic, uh, you know, when people haven't been able to go out and buy gifts and flowers and presents uh, for their loved ones. Uh, what is the kind of traction that you're seeing at Ferns and Petals? If you could tell us a little bit about the growth momentum that you've seen over the last See, couple uh, of months. December was kind of OK, but it was towards the end of December and the whole of January, which was kind of disturbed. And especially the mid-January, you know, uh, towards uh, 10, 15th of January was a difficult time because there were partial lockdowns and some of, some of our shops were closed. People were not moving out to buy things. So, but now, yes, now uh, things seem to be back to normal and uh, we are almost at the pre-COVID level. So maybe 10, 15 days down the line, uh, Valentine Day should be good. I'm very, very hopeful. Right. Uh, you know, uh, Vikas, I want to talk a little bit about uh, what the growth areas will be for 2022, because uh, I'm sure by now you've already decided what the uh, areas of focus will be in the year ahead. We, we have uh, multiple businesses, but of course, as far as the retail and the flowers are concerned, we are we have very, very ambitious plans for the year. And uh, we, we are going to hit at least five to six new geographies. We will be growing uh, very fast in domestic market as well. We're expanding our product base. We are expanding our retail base. And at the same time, we probably, you know, uh, look at a, a branding which has never been done by this brand. You know, we want to be, you know, uh, ATL uh, with all the different media, um, uh, with, with some celebrity endorser and everything. So it's a very exciting year ahead. Right, you spoke a little bit about category expansion. You're going to be adding more products uh, into the overall portfolio. So tell us a little bit about which categories are you looking at expanding into? We, we were known as florist and then we moved towards cakes. So it's cakes and flowers basically. But now, of course, there are many other things which have caught up. Like chocolate is a big thing. We, 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 we intend to have our own chocolate brand, which will be, will be selling through our portal. We also have green plants come up a big way you know you know with different combinations and combos with green plants we are also looking at uh, government easing norms as far as the liquor supply is concerned so maybe you know a bottle of champagne or a wine along with your flask so uh, plants chocolates wine different single malts and maybe you know people also um, i think are very fascinated by our personalized gifting we are expanding our you know base in terms of personalized gifting installing new machines and we are trying to do express delivery of those personalized gifts so uh, there are the areas of focus right you know i also want to talk a little bit about uh, the offline expansion because uh, in terms of stores as well you all have a very good presence and uh, i believe you are looking at furthering uh, expanding 
uh, the number of stores as well. So tell us a little bit about how many stores you're looking at expanding to and what is the base that you're uh, looking at hitting? We are close to 400 outlets right now with cake and flowers put together. And uh, looking at the current speed and the, and, and the overall infrastructure, we are looking at uh, two stores a week, which is around 100 in a year. And that is for the next financial year. And maybe, you know, we have very ambitious target of having one store a day and going further from 2023-24. Wow, that's interesting. That's an aggressive pace for this. Uh, I'm sure there's a lot of investment also that's required into the business. Will you be looking at raising some funds or will you be funding this internally? What is the plan? We, out are, there? we are in the, we are, but the, the thoughts are clear in our mind. Things are still, you know, at discussion level. Let's see. But, you know, see, basically our model is a franchising model. And franchising model, the investment to open the shop is of an individual who takes up the franchisee. So to expand, expand our retail uh, base or expand more shops, we don't actually real, uh, need too much, you know, capital and too much investment. Yes, to service them and to grow overseas and getting into new products, warehouses, hubs, you know, R&D, technology. We, we do need, uh, you know, capital investment. Let's see how it goes. Right. Uh, uh, tell us a little bit about your international expansion plans, because I do believe that uh, you all are already present in, um, uh, you know, in uh, out of the country. And there are plans to go uh, even more global uh, than what it is at this point. Yes, uh, we, we are uh, very, very ambitious and we want to be a global player when it comes to gifting. So uh, and uh, we are in five countries right now. And we, uh, we have kind of, you know, mastered the art of expanding, you know, expanding in new, a new geography with, with, with our experience in the last five to eight years. So now opening a new country has become much more easier. So now you'll see the rollouts happening much faster. So next year, next financial year will probably be, uh, if I'm not being over ambitious, uh, you know, a new country every two months. Wow, that's an interesting uh, uh, pipeline and target that you set for yourself. A final question before I let you go, because on um, the revenue targets, uh, what kind of revenue targets are you working with? Uh, if you could give us some details. We are, we are looking at closing somewhere around 650, 675 uh, CR this financial year. And next year, at least 30% higher. Right, so 1,000 crore mark just around the corner. Yes. Uh, we'll wait for that and uh, we wish you all the very best in your journey ahead and uh, thanks so much for joining us it's a pleasure speaking with you thanks for your time thanks a lot thank you so much mm -hmm.